What's going on everyone? Welcome to the warehouse series. So today I will not be having a mic. I put my mic in the washing machine and it is not working right now. I do have a wireless mic that I'm going to try to hook up. So uh, next video we should be good to go. So this one's going to be without a mic. I hope you can hear me okay. I also want to say if you're new to the channel, the easiest way to navigate my channel is through the playlist. Uh, so scroll to playlist and hopefully you can find something that you're looking for. Also, my voice is a little rasp. I, you know, sign of stuff. I just got over being sick. So hopefully we can get through this video okay. So today we're going to be talking about how you could build your palace picture perfect. As you can see in this picture right here, uh, this is perfect. This is beautiful. Uh, so I just told someone at work that whenever I build pallets, I, I got OCD. I'd rather build a pallet that looks like this and get 102% then get 120% and have a palette that does not look like this. That's just the way I select. I'd rather have a palette that looks like this. So with that being said, let's go over some of the few things that uh, I think that you should be going through your head whenever you're building a palette. How, you know, how are we gonna get our palette to look this good? So the first thing you gotta do is what I said in the Vogue Like video. We need to get an idea of what our order is gonna look like before we even start it. How do we do that? The four things that I talked about, where your palette starts, where it ends, how many cases and how many pick locations, and how many cube is it. If we put those four things together, we should get an idea from selecting in the same stuff every single time. Now, the more time you get into the warehouse, the more experienced you're going to be. But guys, it's the same stuff every day. Nothing changes. Okay, so if I know where I start and where I end, and if I have 270 cases at 240 pick locations, I know I have a lot of different items and I know that I have a 130 cube. 130 cube is our max at our building, so I know I got two full pallets. So I already have an idea of what my order is going to look like and you need to be doing the same thing. So people that ignore all that stuff at the beginning of their order, whether it's a headset or it's stickers or however you select your order, that's the worst thing you could do. You should be listening to everything that thing is telling you on those four things I just named. Another thing that I think is very important that people don't do. Now, I know a lot of people are not allowed to have phones on the floor, but take pictures of your stuff. If you're in a part of the warehouse that you struggle at and all of a sudden you get it, that's working for me. Just take your camera, your phone out very discreetly. Take a picture of it so you can remember it. That way you can remember for the next time you're in that warehouse, what did I do the last time that was over here that's working? Especially when you're a new selector because you're not familiar with all the boxes. It takes a long time to get familiarized with the warehouse and the setup. So take a picture of your product real quick that way you can look at it later. That's right, I did that and that worked out perfect for me. So I'm gonna do that every time. I tell you guys all the time, pretty much all the cases that you select for one order are going to be on the next order. All right, stores are they have the same product and at all the stores, and they were ordering basically the same thing every time. So a lot of the cases go out every single order. So remember how you're selecting your order. All right, guys. The other thing I want to talk about is do not have your cases hanging over the edge of the pallet. When you have your cases hanging over the edge of the pallet, that's the result of a fat pallet. You know, a pallet that you see just goes real wide, and that's a result of pallets that fall over. If I put a case down that's hanging off the side of the pallet, I turn it immediately. I either turn it and I put it in a different uh, spot. If it's hanging over the side of the pallet, it does not need to go there. So if you want your pallets looking picture perfect, do not hang cases over the side of the pallet. All right, another thing you want to do is you want to tie them when possible. Now, a lot of people think that whenever they're tying in when possible that they're going in the uh, opposite direction. So if I have a case going this way, I need to put a case going this way. That is not necessarily what tying is. You could have cases going the same direction. So I could have two cases here and the next layer up two cases here. Okay, that way they're staggering. You can still have cases facing inward every level. You just put them staggering up the pallet. So it's tying cases in layer by layer, just not the opposite direction. So remember that too, tie in when you possibly can. All right, one of the things I talk about on this channel all the time is high corners, strong corners, and more importantly, level corners. If you can ever make a corner level and strong, you want to do so. You should be focusing on corners in. Now, someone did bring up a good point. 
If you're a shorter person, once you get up to a certain height, you want to start building from the middle out. Very good point that someone put up, even for someone like me. I'm six foot tall, but once I get to a certain point, I build from the middle out. I do not build from the outside in. When I say build from corners in, it's more or less I'm talking about the base up to about waist high. And then if you're a shorter person, absolutely, you want to start building from the middle out. So remember that if you are a shorter person. But like I said, even for me, once I get to a certain height, I start building from the middle out. So that is something to think about as well. Guys, remember, I build the same stuff the same way every time. So if I got an order that I know is going to have salad dressings in it, I showed you my video of a salad dressing. I'm stacking my salad dressings up the front. If I know I got, uh, you know, Gatorades coming up, I know I put my Gatorades a certain way. I know I don't like putting water low on my palate. I like to try to have it as high as possible. I know that I build my cross and T's all the time. I try to keep smaller cases in the middle of my palate with bigger cases on the outside. I have a system. This is what works for me. And this is how you build pretty palettes is whenever you start doing the same thing. Because then what happens is you just start strategically, you know, replacing things. Okay, this is working for me. I'm going to do this. But if you keep the same overall game plan, then little things are going to come into play. All right, guys. And the last thing I want to talk about is something important. Do not force cases and gaps that do not fit. Every time someone forces a case into somewhere that does not fit, they got that mindset. I got to go level by level. And then they will not leave that level and go to the next level until they fill in every single gap. And then they're sitting there squeezing a case into a gap that does not fit. Do not put a case in somewhere it does not fit. Remember, 99% of the time you have smaller cases coming up in your order and you will find something to fit in that gap. So don't force it, build around it, and when that case comes, have a mental block or a mental uh, picture of what you're looking for. All right, have an idea. Maybe uh, you know, this noodle box will fit in there. So if I get any of those noodle boxes, because usually we get them every order, I'm gonna put that in that gap that I'm looking for. I have an idea of what case I'm looking for, so whenever I get that case, I will try to fill in that gap. But don't force cases in gaps that don't fit. All right, so back to the picture I was talking about is this one right here. Uh, you know, perfectly built palette. Do you think this person started off this palette by saying, oh, I wonder how I'm gonna build this palette? Do you think they, put cases hanging over the edge to get this perfect cube? Do you think that they just wing this? No, they have a system that they use. Everything that I just went over, they did this. They know where they started, they know where they ended, they knew the product that was coming up because they select the same product every day. Everything I just talked about, they put this into this order. This is the way I like to build. This palette is absolutely perfect. And this is the result of what I just got done talking about. All right, here's another palette that I want to talk about. Once again, guys, this part of the warehouse, uh, it, it seems like everybody's warehouse is pretty much slotted the same. Uh, we all have the same stuff in our warehouse too, and the same uh, stuff. But once again, everything that I talked about, even though a lot of these cases are, uh, you know, they line up like the first two layers, you got cases that don't line up but they always seem like they come level again. They have a system they have, all right? People, the throwing the throw crap, it does not work, okay? So I was, I started asking people in our warehouse, do all your pallets look the same? I started asking people that have been there a while, eight to 10 years, do all your pallets look the same? No, they, they were answering me no. I was like, and I was kind of shocked that they were answering me. I'm like, then, then what are you doing? Because you're, why should you be building your pallet differently every time? Like I tell you guys all the time, I don't care if I'm up in dairy, you know, or produce or if I'm down at dry goods. You give me 10 orders from the same part of the warehouse every time and my pallet's going to look very identical. So every time this person builds this pallet right here, they should be doing the same thing the next time to get a big order like this. But I guarantee they knew before they started this, I'm going to have two full pallets and this is going to be all weight and I need to be ready for this. They were not winging this, I guarantee it. And the last palette I want to show you right here, once again, beautiful, nice and square palette. Now this is on a plastic piece of palette, I'm pretty sure. Uh, so you tend to get a little taller, narrow palette because I said those plastic palettes are a little bit skinnier and smaller than the surface of a piece of blue or red wood. Uh, but the two arrows that I wanted to point at down here, the two red arrows are pointing to two Arizona T's. I say keep light cases together on top of each other or in corners, okay? Because now we got two level corners, it doesn't matter if we have a lower inside, 
They kept this palette level the whole way out. There's only one thing on this entire palette I disagree with, and I want you to leave that in the comment section below. If you think you know what I disagree with on this palette, let me know. But other than that, beautiful palette. Once again, they have a system. They keep things level. They keep a base going. And then they start tying things in towards the top. You know, pointing cases inwards with the smaller cases in the middle. They have one case that cans up on their side. And then they tie it again at the top layer. They have a system. All right, guys. Learn your system. Take pictures and start learning. <laughs> I, I can't say it enough. You know, you learn your system. And I promise you, a year or two years go on. You're going to start selecting your palettes without even thinking about what you're doing. All right, this picture right here, another one, guys. Perfect base on the back of this warehouse. If I remember correctly, they said they this is their first time throwing over there. I'm not 100% sure. Uh, they had perishable or dry goods, and they got uh, offered to go to the dry goods. But look at that base. High corners, low inside, perfect base, perfect height. Time to start tying this uh, palette in. And then the front palette where I got my arrows, might look a little crappy, but it's not. We got nice strong corners. Okay, we got the heavier cases on the corners pointing inward, and we got smaller cases like this. The inside of this palette, even though it's leaning, is not going to push its heavy corner over. It's not going to happen. So even though the palette is not perfectly square, it is built properly, and that's why the palette is staying up and not. Now imagine this big heavy case is in the middle, like the part of the palette I hate building in. All right, then I tell you that I hate going like this. Put that Hershey syrup right in the middle. Now put a bunch of little cases on the outside in the corner. It's falling over. That's why I hate putting cases like that in that part of the palette. All right, so now I want to talk to someone uh, that's been messaging me back and forth. I try helping them on Discord privately. Uh, so uh, they are a newer selector, and here is your palette. So honestly, I want to tell you that your palette is not bad because once again, we're in this part of the warehouse that really stinks. It really, it's really hard uh, to get things to come together. Uh, in this part of the warehouse, sometimes you are winging it, all right? Sometimes you are like, okay, you know, because it gets frustrating because everything's a different size, everything's a different weight, uh, and it seems like weight, 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 right? You always just get a bunch of stuff with weight. Uh, the first thing I want to show you is this picture right here. The only thing I want to tell you is sometimes it's just a matter of switching two boxes around. If where my black arrows are, if you would have took the white box and that brown box and switched them around, those two white boxes would have had to give you a, probably a level corner. Sometimes that's all it takes. All right, experiment. When you have orders like this, where you know it's just one lousy case after another, it's important to if you could have something work, you want to make it work. So it's just a matter of switching these two boxes around to give me my level corner that I'm looking for might be all you need to help get that palette a little bit more sturdier. Also, you, this is another option you could have done right here. Now I got two red arrows pointing down to here. I just duplicated these cases so it might look a little weird. So instead of putting the two cases that you had there, you could have put these two cases there. That way it would have give you a high corner, a little bit lower of an inside. And then on the back corner of this, where you have your ocean spray at the bottom, I would have took the clear water that you have stacked straight up and I would have put two more facing inwards, and then you would have had a nice level line going all the way across your aliens or whatever they are, and juices and then waters. And then I would have started facing everything inward, overlapping my boxes to tie in that way. I hope that makes sense. This is not always easy to explain on a video. If you have more questions, please instant message me, but I hope that makes sense. I like to face cases towards the middle of the palette when possible. I like the face cases on the back of the palette facing in like your ocean spray. And then when I have an opportunity higher in the palette to tie it in inwards, I will. Uh, so, you know, guys, like I said, you find your system. You might not use what I am telling you to the T, but you might take a little bit of what I'm telling you and maybe what a trainer told you at your work. Now back to the other palette where I have this yellow line. I like how you did your Gatorade down here. I like how you have your middle section of Gatorade facing towards the middle of the palette and you had an opportunity to tie in. It doesn't always happen. There's times that I have a level line like that and I don't tie in because, you know, you're just seeing something that I'm not seeing in the picture. But all in all, this is not a bad palette. Sometimes in this part of the warehouse, you tend to call them stacked. The only thing I could say is 
throw some wrap around it. All right, so on this side of the pallet right here, on the back part, I'm taking a guess that your boxes came before all the water that's on the back. I cannot stand putting water on the back of my pallet. I cannot stand putting water towards the bottom of my pallet. It doesn't matter if it's one level. If I can get that water one level up, then it's gonna work out better for me. If I can get it up towards the front of my pallet, it's gonna work better for me. Why? Because when we hit our throttle, we get shifts. If you have this water on the back of your pallet and you get a shift, you're possibly gonna drop your pallet over. So what I would have done, if you had these boxes, if I'm right, and these waters came after the boxes, I would have took my two white dots and I would have put them where my two white arrows are. I would have tried to fill in that second layer. I would have moved the cases twice if I had to. I would have moved the cases onto that second layer to try to have all my second layer boxes as well. And then I could have put the waters up on the third level. Okay, so like I said, the higher you can get waters in your pallet, and the more towards the front of the pallet that you can get those waters, the better. So just remember that for the next time. And my big black arrow that I have up in the front pointing to my welches, uh, I would have tried to get that lower too. It's a big box. I definitely would not have had it in the middle. I would have saved the middle of my pallet for smaller cases. Uh, yeah, but you're like, even your uh, Capri Sun you have back there, that would be up towards the front of my pallet as well. All right, so let's move to the front pallet now. Uh, so the red dot where you had your oasis, I would have turned that face in, inwards, okay? Remember, so when you face cases inwards, you give yourself more room to build. When you have cases running the length of the pallet, you're giving yourself less room to build. Uh, so what I would have done is face the, face the oasis facing inwards. And then over here uh, where I have my blue dots at with the blue arrow, I would have took that whole column and I would have shifted it over where my blue arrow is and it would have been on top of these two white cases. It would have tied in the two white cases. So I have no problem with your column there. I just would have moved it over on top of the two white cases where my red arrow is over here pointing to these two high C's or whatever these are. I would not put them on their sides. I never put them on their sides unless I have zero pressure on them. So the only time I put it on the side is if I have a case here and I can bridge over it with no pressure. You have direct pressure on this it can buckle those cases and seep out because they're just little cardboard boxes. So just keep that in mind next time. I'd rather have them flat than upright like that. And the last thing I want to talk about on your pallet is this right here. So the bottom case right next to your Gatorade, that bottom clear case down there, uh, you put it down and then you left it down. Notice how our whole entire pallet is leaning towards our corner. The only reason why it's doing that is because of that bottom case. If you would have took just a second to take that bottom case and center it in between those two boxes, when you put that other case on top of it, it would have leveled everything out. That's all it is. Your whole entire column is leaning because of that bottom case being pushed over too far. So anytime you're putting a case on top and you notice that it's hanging off too much on the one side, just center the case. Take the time, just that case being two inches off is throwing off your whole entire middle of your pallet leaning. So just remember that next time. Put a case down, doesn't mean you can't move it again. Uh, yes, we wanna to get to the point of set it in a forget it mentality, but that does not mean that you are not allowed to go back and touch a case if it's gonna make your pallet better. So yeah, but your pallets are not that bad. So just keep, keep a lot of stuff I'm talking about in mind. Your pallets are square, that's the most important thing. Your cases are not hanging off the sides. Uh, you are tying in cases. There is just very little that you're doing wrong. So I have no doubt that you're going to be building a heck of a lot better pallets in the near future. So guys, that's it for today. Keep sending your pictures in Discord. Discord's link in the description below. Uh, guys, uh, comment, all that stuff. Uh, subscribe to the channel. I appreciate everybody. Apologize for not having a mic today. I'll see you guys next time. Have a great day.